year ago and made this video about the geography of Iceland, which I'm very satisfied with. And, uh, and yeah, you should check it out. It's probably one of my best. Anyway, I was asked in that video, in the comments, that to do a video where I talk about the different uh, districts and boroughs of Reykjavik. And oh, I'm not going to do exactly that because there are a lot of districts and boroughs in Reykjavik that I just that see are very much alike, where I don't have a very like high feelings towards them. Like if I did a video in say Aurpa, it'd be just like a video I did about Gravarvogur, basically. But uh, I have lived in Breidholt ever since moving to Reykjavik, so I just want to walk around a little bit and talk about that. Now I've talked about, of course, that Breidholt is sort of known as being the ghetto of Reykjavik. If you look around, yeah, it's, uh, you need, this, is the, this is what the wood looks like. Um, so, first, a little, a little backstory. So, um, in the, after World War II, there was a, and before also, there was a crippling housing shortage in Reykjavik. So a lot of the poor working people lived in like, uh, like leftover army barracks, for example, leftover from the occupation forces of the war, and these were just terrible housing conditions. Like they were, uh, they barely, you know, kept uh, kept people safe against the wind and cold, and people. So people who lived there also had to exp uh, use a lot of their money just to warm the place up. So it was miserable living, and uh, during the 1960s, the. Uh, Reykjavik government uh, at the time headed by uh, uh, Geir Hallgrimsson, who was uh, a member of the uh, uh, conservative independence party. Yeah, the independence party pretty much ran the city continuously from its creation in 1929 until 1974 and then continuously for another 20 years. So yeah, anyway. Uh, in around 1965 uh, it was decided to build up a massive new housing infrastructure project with cheap, cheap, affordable housing for the middle to lower classes. And that's when this area of Bredot, the first area, started to get built up. Uh, the Bachkar. Um, uh, all the blocks, as we're going to see in a while, they form the same sort of U shape. Uh, the idea being that, you know, inside the U, there is, uh, you have protection against most winds, so people get Children can play outside, and you can go outside and grill and chill, and uh, also some open, larger open green areas like here. And in the summer, you can often see, yeah, children playing or whatnot. It's obviously winter right now, and winter without snow, so there isn't that much to do outside, I suppose, right now. <laughs> it's uh, the 30th of November. This is quite warm for that. It's very warm for for November. It's uh, like like. You, yeah, I'm not even wearing a jacket or anything. It's a little bit chilly, but for my like, for my uh, experience, this is just very nice weather. But yeah, let's take a look, take a walk around. Okay, so these parking spots here are the bane of my existence. I actually used to live in uh, this building over there for a few years. Now I didn't have a car back then, but thank God, because finding a parking space. Okay, not a good, right now not a good example because. Obviously, most people are, or a lot of people are away. But let's say you come home late at night, everybody's already home, then it's just absolutely like, yeah, even in the ghetto of Reykjavik, there's still a very high car ownership and uh, it can be very hard to find a parking space. Uh, now, people in Bredot often have discussions of which part of Bredot is really the, um, uh, like, the most shadiest, <laughs> the most ghetto is. And there is, as far as I can tell, no real consensus about that. Not that I've heard. No, basically the people up there in the upper Bredot, uh, which was built a little later than Bakkat, it was built I think in the 70s, people up there say that down here is the actual ghetto, versus I think the people down here say that the real ghetto is up there on the hills, hilltops. So, I don't know. Um, but I will also, but we're gonna check out now a different area, which you'll find uh, it's definitely not a, a ghetto, but it's definitely still part of Bredo. So let's check that out. Okay, yeah, so some of those buildings have definitely seen better days and need a little bit of maintenance, but uh, usually but a, but a lot of them have also been well maintained while I lived here. So it's, it's an ongoing thing, you know. 
uh, you know, the elements in Iceland, of course, are very strong. So you, you need to repaint houses and fix them up quite regularly, just, you know, because of the wear and tear of nature. Okay, so we are technically still in the Bakkar, still in Breidolt, still in, even in the Bakkar area of, uh, of Breidolt. And if you take a look around now, we have like these large, fine, suburban houses. And uh, technically still Breidolt, so technically still within the ghetto, but does this really feel or look like a ghetto? I'm gonna say no. So, uh, my cameraman just asked, hmm, or just said, hmm, I think I smell weed. And I was like, dude, it's Bredov. You, yeah, you smelled weed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, talk to about, I'll talk about that in just a moment. But first, um, yeah, here. Yeah. So, um, this uh, apartment complex here, uh, a lot of people think it's butt ugly, but I, for whatever reason, I love it's hard to get it into one shot, but this uh, apartment complex, Söderfett, is actually quite massive. When you see it, see it from further down uh, beneath, uh, the, from the lower part of Breidolt, it looks like a giant white palace on the horizon. And when it was being constructed, it was nicknamed Krókurin, the hook. That's because there is a town in northwestern Iceland called Söderkrókur, which is often nicknamed hook, Krókurin. At the time of its construction, this was the largest apartment complex ever, ever built in Iceland. I think it was built in the mid-1970s, early 1970s. And uh, yeah, and was at the time the largest or the one that had the highest uh, capacity for people living there. About 2,500, which is about the population of uh, Söderkrogur, the town which is nicknamed the Hood. Yeah, it's, um, it's pretty much a landmark that you can see from very far away uh, in all of uh, Reykjavik. Yeah, back to the issue of marijuana and drugs and stuff. You know, the stuff that actually makes ghetto a ghetto a ghetto. So, um, like, what is the most shady thing that I've uh, witnessed while living here? So I've lived here for about 80 years. And well, two things that come to mind. One time this, uh, like, drunk Lithuanian guy or whatever, like, uh, accosted me. Uh, because he thought that I had taken his bus ticket. By the way, it was like it was like a Thursday afternoon, and he was drunk, you know, waiting for a bus, and lost his ticket, and asked if I had stolen it. Uh, then he finally found his ticket, and then he was like, "Hey, buddy, I was just messing around." <laughs> like, yeah. Another thing that happened, like, was that um, so one time I was coming home after a night shift, and. Uh, so it was like 8 in the morning on a Wednesday and I'm walking across a large parking lot and this guy uh, comes towards me but you know he doesn't come right toward like he's like from 10 meters away or so he shouts like hey you here to bring me the drugs <laughs> I'm like like I'm coming home from work late in the morning I'm like uh, no and he just fucks off somewhere but goes back into some stairwell but yeah one thing I love about Breidolt are all these wooded areas that uh, separate the different boroughs of uh, Breidolt from one another. It's in the summertime, also in the wintertime, but more in the summer. If you walk around here, you'll probably spot uh, quite a few stoners or other drug addicts hanging out here. Mainly just stoners. It's mainly, mainly just stoners. Um, yeah, hence the weed smell that uh, he was referencing earlier. Hello. <laughs> yeah, and all around just very friendly neighborhood. Yeah. Mm. Must be too frozen for uh, must water must be frozen or whatever. Yeah, one thing I gotta say in the eight or I've seen nine years by now. Nine years that I've lived in Breidot. Things have definitely improved here in terms of general infrastructure. Like the the walk paths have been improved. There's more street lights and, uh, and stuff like that. Playgrounds have been kept up quite well. So 
Yeah, I gotta say, Predov has definitely improved in the time that I've lived here, so that's nice. Okay, so this here is a um, is a uh, machine gun nest from World War II. Uh, to my knowledge, there's only two of those left in Predov. Um, there might have been more at some point, but I guess also some of them could have just been destroyed because of construction work and whatever, but this one at least remains. It's because higher up here on the hill where we're gonna go next is um, uh, it's like a, an important weather me weather measuring station and uh, uh, the Brits figured if the Germans were to arrive this would be one of the first uh, points of interest they need to capture uh, also because there was a radio, yeah, because of the radio mast also. So they dug some emplacements in those hills here to uh, protect against the approach. Uh, this here is definitely my favorite part of Breitholt, for very obvious reasons, the view. You can see uh, pretty much the entire city. See over to uh, Snijvensnes, the glacier over there, and uh, um, Akrones over there, and uh, see Keplavik all in the distance. I don't think we can quite film it, but it is there. And yeah, on quiet days like this, it's amazing. Also in the winter, well, it is winter, but at night when there's a clear sky, there's also a pretty good spot to go and see um, the northern lights. So yeah, forget about Grochta, it's, there's a billion tourists there every night, so come here. Don't come here, I want to be alone here. F fuck off, why am I, why am I exposing my, uh, this? <laughs> and you know, yeah, it's very good to see northern lights and stars. And in the summer, you know, the birds flying, children playing, it's very nice up here. And of course the Asia, the mountain that towers over Reykjavik, always, always looks beautiful on calm days like this. It's, um, yeah. This is probably the best way to enjoy Reykjavik as a whole. See? This is probably, to my knowledge, the highest point of elevation within the city limits. And uh, it's, uh, yeah. Uh, but also well, the reason why I'm filming here now is uh, it might get ruined soon. Uh, the buildings at Topo over there, like this building over there, the Grace uh, Square, didn't used to exist until quite recently, so, so yeah, the city is definitely encroaching into this empty area, and there's supposed to be a new road also constructed here somewhere to connect Copa over with the Predovsbreit, which is over there. Um, that's because the already existing road, which is behind the hill here, um, there's so much traffic congestion there now that... Uh, mm, I understand why they need this road, but uh, it's gonna it's not gonna be the same once the road is here. But yeah, the view is definitely very good. Okay, so we're just gonna take a little drive through Bredal. So this is now Selja Kvervi, so the borough where I live. Um, so yeah, one thing I want to talk about also is. Um, so, again, about the status of this area as a ghetto. So, of course, when you read the news, um, you know, when you re read the weekly news or nightly news on uh, what uh, all the crimes that the uh, police had to engage with in the past 24 hours, uh, often you will read uh, something, something occurred in uh, Predot. But to me, it's like, let's say you read that uh, there was a robbery committed somewhere in Predot or a violent assault or whatever it's like um, you know when you read it you're like ah oh, of course uh, Bredo, what did you expect but if you read something about that happening in say area 105 or investor or uh, some or copa or god knows where within the capital city area you just go okay whatever it's just some crime somewhere but as soon as you read that it's occurred in um, uh, in uh, but I thought then, of course, yeah, you have the basically you have the confirmation bias there. So it's like, yeah, of course, because Predot is a ghetto. <laughs> yeah, it do be like that.
could be like that a little bit here. So yeah, a lot of drug addicts, a lot of um, a lot of dealers, but mm, but yeah, it's like a not but not really what you would ever consider to be a major crime area or anything like that.